Jonathan, does this news come as a surprise to you? Yeah, it, it does. Uh, in a sense, obviously, look, we saw Romo play not very much last year, but he played, you know, he threw the ball four times. He looked really good in that one series there at the end of the season. Uh, we thought that he could get over those injuries. He's only going to be 37 this season, so you think he still has two, three more years left. But, uh, look, uh, you, you're expecting him to go to, let's say, a Denver or a Houston. You know he's not going to end up in Dallas. You, you figure that, okay, they're not going to trade for him, but they're going to figure something out. And then ultimately, of course, he decides what he decided today uh, to retire and, and join a CBS or a Fox somewhere that uh, no doubt would want him at the end of his playing career when we thought would have been in 2019, for example. So it's not a surprise that he's going to join an announcer's booth. It is a surprise, though, at least in my mind, uh, that he's doing it so soon. Right. You know, I mean, and it is kind of surprising for Cowboys fans, I'm sure. I mean, Romo was an undrafted free agent out of Eastern Illinois in 2003. He turned down a larger signing bonus from the Denver Broncos at the time to join the Cowboys, where he became the franchise's leader in passing yards and touchdowns. What does Romo mean to the Cowboys? Well, he should mean a lot, right? I mean, let's go ahead and pump the brakes. If anyone's thinking he's a Hall of Famer, I don't believe that he is. That doesn't mean that he hasn't had an amazing career. But, of course, you need a little more postseason success. What Tony Romo uh, means for the Cowboys is, though, he's a bridge uh, from Troy Aikman to they had some really down years with quarterbacks. And he was able to bridge that gap. Now, of course, they wanted an NFC uh, title. He was not able to bring that. In fact, they haven't even been to an NFC title game in the past 21 years. That's the one thing that's really off of his resume, of course, a Super Bowl, but even a chance to compete for a Super Bowl. He's 2-4 and four all time in the postseason. But what he means to the Cowboys, people should not forget, those were some very down years after Troy Aikman left the Cowboys. And he was a bridge and a very good bridge, a Pro Bowl quarterback for a number of years for those Cowboys. Now, like you mentioned earlier, too, you know, a trade was in the talks and neither the Broncos nor the Texans would trade for Romo, considering those were the teams he wanted to play for, if not the Cowboys. This move kind of makes sense. But is this really the end for Romo? So I don't think so. Uh, and, and I'll tell you why. Look, it, it's because of that lack of postseason success. These guys, they all have an itch to play, right? You look at a Brett Favre. You know, Tim Tebow couldn't sit still on a, on a studio set long enough. He had to go out and, and play minor league baseball. Uh, the only one who hasn't really scratched that itch is a John Gruden. Let's not forget, uh, he hasn't been a coach since before Barack Obama became president, and he's having to swat these NFL teams down left and right. Tony Romo is a better quarterback than half of the starting quarterbacks in the NFL. You could argue that, uh, and it would probably be a very good argument, he's still a top 10 quarterback. Now, when one of those quarterbacks inevitably gets injured, I think a team's going to come calling to Tony Romo there in week 10, and he's in the announcer booth, and they're going to say, hey, Tony, I know you're still in great shape. I know you've been working out at that Marriott on Saturdays whenever uh, you guys call a game the next day. Why don't you come to us? We're a contender. We're 8-2. and two. We're charging towards the playoffs. It's going to be tough for him to turn down because I think that lack of postseason success, he has to go make another run at it. It just doesn't feel like this is the end for Romo.